Okay, on the count of three, turn around. One, two, three. <laughs> These fifth and sixth grade science students from Hermosa, Montessori, and Tucson are definitely having a good time, but they are also learning real life lessons about the role large carnivores play in our natural world. Well, today we learned that how pumas would affect the ecosystem of deers, and if there were, weren't any pumas, how the uneven the numbers of deer would be. So like they would be all these crouches and stuff. And if there were pumas, there would be an even amount of deer. Everyone's At the beginning of this exercise, each student is either a deer or a resource that deer need to survive. Okay, so remember, Deer need food, water, and shelter, right? Okay, so we're going to have symbols for food, water, and shelter. So here's food. Everyone do food. Okay, water. Shelter. Food. Water. Shelter. Water. Food. Water. Shelter. Food. Okay, you guys got it? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a game where we're either going to be resources that the deer need or we are going to be deer. There would be one um, line of people on one side, they were the resources, and there would be a line of people on the other side, they would be deer. And they, um, they would choose a resource that they needed, so this would be food, this would be water, and this would be shelter. And so you would turn around, and so would the resources, and they would choose one. And the deer have to run over across to get their matching resource before all the other deer did. And if they didn't get one, they would die, and they would become a natural resource. And at first, we are going to see what happens to the ecosystem when we don't have predators. And then we're going to add a couple pumas, a couple mountain lions, and we're going to see what happens to the deer population once we have predators in the ecosystem. And we're going to see if our hypothesis that Vinny and Blaze and a few others suggested is true, that we'll have a population crash without predators. <laughs> it doesn't take long for the students to demonstrate that an ecosystem with an overabundance of deer and no predators will eventually make for a short supply of resources for the deer as well as other animals. So I know we're having lots of fun, but in between each round, we need to talk about what just happened. So we started out with 10 deer. How many deer do we have now? We had 16 deer. What do you think is going to happen? Are all you deer going to survive? No. Okay, yeah, so most of you are going to die. Later in the exercise, a few mountain lions are added to the mix and the students gain a better understanding of how each rung in the ecosystem ladder is dependent on the next. I think you would make a phenomenal puma. You want to be a puma? Okay. And who else? You want to be a puma? Okay. But the pumas, mountain lions, they're just going to eat one deer. So they can grab one person going there and then grab one person going back. Now, what happens after the mountain lion feeds on that deer? What happens to the rest of the carcass? It becomes a resource, yeah. So if a mountain lion grabs someone, then they turn into a resource. What do you see? Someone raise their hand and tell me as a scientist what they observe. Let's talk about, about trends. Is it more stable with pumas or is it more stable without pumas? With, with. with pumas. And, and, and what, do you, what do you think is the reason for that? Why, why do you guys think that is? I'm trying to just be really creative and bring different approaches to teaching some of these subjects. I mean, I think if we ask most people whether they thought um, phylogenetics could be a fun, hands-on, activity, most people would probably say no, um, but the students were able, we were able to create a fun, hands-on activity out of it. 
This unique science program was born out of the idea that exposing students early to predator-prey relationships and their biology will help them better understand the future needs for large carnivore management in Arizona. Because just as the prey population can overutilize a resource in certain situations, so can the predator, making the relationship between predator and prey a complex system of checks and balances. Predator-prey relationships are a complex aspect of an even more complex ecological association of all aspects of the community and the vegetation in a particular environment. If a predator population starts to exert too much pressure on a particular prey species, it's the responsibility of the Wildlife Management Agency to engage and try to bring those various populations within management objectives. This is one aspect of the lesson that these kids receive as part of Project CAP. So the Game and Fish Department, um, I guess a couple years ago, a group got together and decided that they really wanted to increase and develop a curriculum that was based around large carnivores and it's called Project CAT and it stands for Carnivores and Teachers. So everything that we do we try to somehow relate back to large carnivores in the environment and kind of take a top-down approach on how carnivores impact the ecosystem and then how everything from water to soil to vegetation ultimately impacts carnivores and also our actions as um, humans, how we're impacting carnivores. The primary funding for Project CAT comes from the Arizona Desert Bighorn Sheep Society as part of the department's educational outreach for the betterment of wildlife in Arizona. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to do science. Like you're not going through books, searching different information about deer. You're actually interacting and seeing how it might be in the wild. The goals for Project CAT are to ultimately create a cohesive unit where not only unique lesson plans can be plucked individually and used in the classroom, but to also have complete units that teachers can utilize that cover different aspects of the project. Eventually, educators will be able to access these programs from the Game and Fish website. One, two, three. Sometimes it's difficult to tell who's getting more out of this class, the teacher or her students. But one thing's for sure, a positive influence on children is never wasted. You know, fortunately I had very supportive parents, but actually in eighth grade I had an incredibly supportive science teacher who actually taught me the activity that we performed today. And, um, and she really encouraged me to pursue my dream of becoming you know, a wildlife biologist and working on large carnivores internationally. And I've been able to do that. So I've been able to accomplish those goals. And so, you know, I think no matter what, you know, how far-fetched their goals or dreams seem to be, I always encourage them to pursue them because I'm very grateful that I had a teacher that did that for me. So.